Uh, hi, another pediatrician with a non pediatrician. Another pediatrician. Oh, press the button. Another pediatrician, non pediatrician issue. Um, this is uh, T Rex Therapeutic prescribing a safer way to prescribe high risk medications. This is our solution. This is the fantastic team who have um, really worked very well uh, over the weekend, and I hope you'll enjoy the presentation. Uh, the background to this is that there are million, about 1.4 million people in this country on a medication called mesotrexate. Mesotrexate is a class of medications called chemotherapy. In low doses, this treats common conditions like rheumatoid arthritis and treats rheumatoid arthritis very well. But this is a poison. And because it's a poisonous substance and can harm and kill people, it's tightly regulated and there's a lot of legislation, there's a lot of... Uh, um, regulation re regarding the prescription and monitoring. And the problem about these, all these medications, like methotrexate, is they need regular blood monitoring. If you can take this medication, it can affect the number of white cells. If the white cells in the blood are low, uh, you can come to harm. It can also inflame the liver and cause other side effects. And this is uh, <coughs> meant to be a busy slide because the, there is a busy problem. There is me, the clinician, who um, uh, decides to put the patient on the medication. I have to order a blood test, I have to look at the blood test to make sure it's fine to give uh, the a prescription for medication. The prescription goes to the pharmacist. The pharmacist needs to check the blood test as well to make sure that I as a clinician not made a mistake. They need to issue the prescription. It goes to the patient. The patient needs to know that whether it's safe to take. The patient then needs to take the medication. And then after two weeks or two months, needs to come back to have a further blood test, which needs to go to, to me to the the clinician, and the whole thing replicates again. And you can see that there's multiple um, means of communication or miscommunication between clinicians, pharmacists, and patients. From the patient's point of view, I've had my blood taken uh, last week at Moorfields, where I work. Um, I want to know, is my blood test okay? Can I take my medication? In fact, has the pharmacist prescribed the medication because it's safe for me to take? More importantly, um, I want to be reminded when to take the medication and to know when I should have my next blood test. From my point of view as a clinician, um, in fact, there's 5,000 patients on this stuff, uh, just in more fields. There's lots and lots of results coming in, so they've all got to be collated. I want to know which tests are abnormal, because if there is an abnormal test, I need to communicate with the patient. How do I do that? I speak to the patient on the phone. Okay, patients don't answer the phone, um, and this is actually how we're communicating these very important results. Um, so, the solution is TRX. This is a patient-centered uh, means of communicating in real time to patients and hopefully to improve safety because two people a year die because of methotrexate problems. This is the solution. Here it comes. Drum roll. <laughs> There we go, perfect. Um, can everyone hear me or do I need a mic? That mic there, in front of you, right in front of your face, that one there. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so the solution we have devised is twofold. The first thing to take note of is that we have, so we've got a clinician web page as well as a mobile application for um, users. <coughs> And the key thing to know about both of these um, sort of views is that, number one, uh, both of these views take information from the exact same database. So you can see the clinician and pharmacist will have access to this view, which will allow them to see not just the patient's most recent blood tests, but also blood test results from previous views as well. And this the same uh, it's true for the user. So the user and the pharmacists are, and the clinicians are all pulling data from the exact same database. But secondly, and more importantly, this allows um, clinicians to contact and um, alert patients in real time. So if, for instance, um, there is an issue with the lab result, you can send it by an uh, you can click send by application, and this immediately pops up on the patient's view. And if the patient clicks acknowledge, there we go. You'll see that the patient has acknowledged the alert. And because not everyone wants to download an application, you can also send an SMS. And hopefully, there we go. Okay, it's not. 
Yeah, I should probably tell my um, while you work. Well. Yeah, it that's does work. it does work. Um, four thirty nine p.m. for the judges. We <laughs> 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 should have checked my ringtone before that. But yeah, so this allows um, clinicians and um, and pharmacists to communicate with patients in real time to um, communicate um, critical information like communication. Great, thank you. Judges, any questions? Yeah? Uh, really important problem to solve. And there are patient, there's a lot of apps that patients have now, so like the NHS app, and the community has different apps. Do you think this would be a separate app that I have to download, or would you can be thinking that maybe it's integratable into the existing stuff? Well, yeah, it would be like. Ideally, we would obviously like to integrate it into um, existing applications. The real issue is that um, different NHS trusts all different all use different applications. So the potential issue that we would face is you know you're not just integrating this functionality into one application, you're integrating it into like you know tens of different applications. So that's why we have an alternative, um, which is the SMS notification. So it's not. We, we know that not everybody is going to want to download a separate app. Not every trust is going to want to collaborate with us to have this integrated into the application. So, which means that, you know, there, and some people don't want to download apps at all, which means that there needs to be some sort of alternative way to reach these people. And, you know, we have the SMS notification. We are hoping, um, and we think it's eminently possible, to have some sort of automated voice call, uh, phone call as well, and this allows us to reach a much wider group of patients who otherwise you know, wouldn't like, take it upon themselves to download a separate app. Yeah. Just to add to that, um, during COVID, uh, the government had all, well, Android and iOS integrated a medical like, alert system. Mm -hmm. Everyone probably had you know, the alert saying you've been, uh, you've been near somebody with COVID. That overrides uh, most of the app notifications and only sort of uh, registered government bodies can do that. The NHS is registered for that in the UK, so there's a potential for very high risk things like don't take your medication to use that. Um, and also, we since we have a central uh, plan to centralize all, all the patient data, any third party, so people, they, some people have the Babylon app, some people have the NHS app, it doesn't matter which app they're using, they don't have to download another app. Um, <laughs> They could easily with us. So, just to say, um, this is a five year old idea which I got funded and didn't come happen. So, I deal with patients, 100 children with uveitis, where I prescribe this stuff. All of the patients are desperate for this app. They all like it. Now, clearly, there's a lot of 17, 80 year olds um, who are on methotrexate, perhaps most of that 1 million people, but most of them are fine with phones, in my experience. Great. Okay. And we've got time for one more question. We've got one. Any more questions? Yeah, okay, and Red Like Me is next. Um, I think, uh, actually, let me just check. Um, sorry, I'll give you the time back. Is there anyone else that we haven't mentioned? Which is it just Red Like Me that's left, or does anyone sitting there thinking we haven't been? Uh, great, okay, Red Like Me next then. Um, I love this app because I'm in Shadow Fire Strong Monitoring where I work at the GP surgery. So every month I go to look at metotroxate, DMR, A's and R. So it's just more like a comment that what you're building could be even expanded to other high risk drug medications. So. Absolutely. I mean, it within hospitals as well, but you're right. And there's many, many drugs, including cytotoxic agents. But there's millions of patients where this happening. Huge amount of resource, uh, GP time, clinician time. There's two full time pharmacists phoning patients, that's all they do. So even if this helps them uh, to free up their time, this will be a real benefit. And also, uh, great for patients, that's the most important thing. Yeah, there, there's actually no limit to what data we can put into it. Um, so this, just using methotrexate as an example, but any drug, any condition, um, and any so, uh, paramedics wanting to see a database and be alerted to things like, um, as an example, don't resuscitate notices, things like that. So, uh, any other questions? Oh, shout it quickly. How do you make sure they yes. receive the messages so, that we need um, to see? Got just, 20 seconds. Just to re-demonstrate, if you click, why won't this say it? Okay. If you click, um, like that. If you click, send via app, 
you get something like an appointment reminder. So it's not just you know, super duper urgent alerts. And if you click acknowledge, patient has acknowledged alert. So obviously, this is not necessarily practical because the clinicians are always looking at the screen, but we could have a completely separate page where there's a list of patients that the clinicians have sent out alerts to, and maybe some sort of like tick box indicator to let the clinician know whether the patient has acknowledged it. And if you're wondering why there's no X button, it's because 